welcome back to the Derifto Micro Build Diary. I'm going to make a jig now so I can make the lower arms. So the reason why I haven't been here is because I had to fit a new engine in my granddad's car last weekend and been busy with work and in fact I may have to take a little bit of a break from this, maybe three month break due to a project at work which I've got a video that I've made that I'm probably going to upload to explain that project and I may be able to continue making videos of that project so all is not lost it would just be this project on the back burner but probably a better project in in place of this one anyway I'm going to measure up for the material I need to cut for the for the uh, basis of the jig which is going to be the box section and it looks like I'm probably just going to make like an eye shape so it'd be like nine inches across there 16 inches or so across there and then just a, a t-bar down through the middle but maybe maybe I should put two pieces like this maybe make it a bit stronger I'm just gonna cut some material and then I will come back in a moment this is where I'm at with the jig right now pop this one on top so as you can see the upright sorry the lower control arm fits on there nicely and in a video before I mentioned that I'd probably need to make two jigs well that is actually fake news so what will be happening is I'll be using a spherical bearing here and I'll be using in, sorry I'll be using rose joint here and here and a spherical bearing up here and nothing here on this arm but for the other side it would just be the opposite and then for the pocket what I may do is make some sort of an arrangement on the back of the jig so I do the main bulk of the fab on this side of the jig and then I flip it over to do the shock shock mounting points I'm not sure if I just made sense then or whether I just spoke a lot of rubbish but as I um, work through this you'll get the idea so now what I need to do is I need to measure up um, some tabs and I need to cut them out of this material so I need to cut eight tabs so be either side of these bushes all four bushes and in the middle because all I've got is the long like 14 mil bolt that goes all the way through here what I'm gonna have to do is make up some sort of spacer in like a tube in the middle between the two plates or tabs so that it doesn't crush because I'll only be using like you know one one of these pockets at a time you'll get the idea anyway I'm going to uh, mark out this material and I'm going to cut some more tabs and also obviously I've got to clean the mill scale off the jig a bit more so shouldn't take me long now to get this this all uh, marked out and cut out and then I've got to obviously drill all the holes bolt it all together and then weld it all together got a huge portion of the jig completed what it needs to complete it is some sort of um, you know something for mounting the shock and something for mounting the anti-roll bar there'll be a tube running from here to here so the anti-roll bar tabs will be easy they'll just come off of the top of the tube and then there'll be some sort of a junction here between two tubes so hopefully the shock mount will tie in somewhere around there I'm just gonna let this cool off for a minute I'm gonna go and grab myself a cup of tea and then we will take the arm out of the jig and we will start to assemble some of the joints and bits and bobs into the jig and see where we are with it as you can see everything is kind of in the jig spacer here 
And when I do the arm for the other hand, that and that will swap. And this and this will swap. Basically, the spacing goes on the opposite side for the opposite hand. Now, I've uh, machined out a couple of these bosses so they fit inside the tube. This is really thin wall tube. It's um, 60 foul or 1.5 mil, which I'm hoping is going to be up to the job. So I've decided to do it this way with the tubes, like this, purely because, for a start, I need to go across like this. Thank you very much. Yeah, I need to go across like this. And obviously you can see that this rose joint is necked right out and there's no hope. And then on this side, to do the same here, go across at an angle, this rose joint will be right on the edge of its articulation. I can gain a bit more by modifying these spacers and uh, necking a bit more out in there, which will probably happen anyway. But I, just, I don't think it's a good idea to have the rose joint on that much articulation all the time. So, we are going to make some tubes and then notch in like so and hopefully, hopefully I've given myself enough length here. I can come all the way down like this onto this boss. So I'm hoping I've given myself enough leeway. And obviously on this one, the angle is much more extreme, so the tube, I don't need nowhere near as much um, distance to notch in on. So fingers crossed, we will be good. And what I'll do is, when I notch into here, because it's going to be quite a hefty notch, I'll remove this and just lay the tube right in right in the middle of the right in the middle of the jig and I may even be able to kind of visualize so you see the tab tabs are in line so it'll give me a bit of a reference point Yesterday, I was in one of their moods where I didn't get the camera out. I thought, oh, I'll get the camera out in five minutes. Uh, but it, that five minutes never came, and I ended up smashing out this arm. So, I mean, it ain't too bad. I need practice. Some of my welds are a bit meh. But they are strong. Hench. AF. So... What I need to do is make a toe arm for this side. <clears throat> I've got some ends that I've been machining. I just need to... I thought I had a 14.5mm drill bit at work. So I, um, I had a look at work. These are M16 by 1.5. So yeah, if you don't know, to find out the drill size, you, you take... The pitch 1.5 away from the diameter and that gives you your drill size anyway I didn't have a 14.5 drill bit at work so I've got to hunt out a 14.5 drill bit I've definitely got a 14 because that there is a 14 but it ain't a 14.5 so worst case scenario I'll bore I'll drill and then bore to, to the right diameter. So yeah, what I really want to do is quickly smash out some toe arms. Probably make one first. I'm pretty confident in my measurement. It's 
405 eye to eye. Basically, your toe arm's going to go from like the middle, and it's like somewhere, somewhere out here, I think, if I remember rightly. I worked it all out previous, and I'm confident it's right. Anyway, so what I need to do is obviously I'm going to take a nut off of each rose joint on the lower arm and um, narrow the track width by the width of that, which I believe is about 12 mil. So just say, I'm going to make the track width 10 mil narrower on the lower control arm. So I'm going to have to do the same on this. But I also need a little bit extra. So what I'll probably do is double nut both ends, both ends, and then one nut. One nut will account for one of these nuts, these nuts, and then the other nut will just give me, that's the amount of adjustment I'll have. So, yeah, let's, um, let's have a go at that. Oh, and I've got something else to tell you. I've been really addicted to snacking chicken. So I got myself some snacking chicken. And I'm just going to smash that while I work. So don't mind me. I found the drill bit I wanted. 14.5. Oh, come on, light. There we go, 14.5. So that I will pop into, into one's lathe. Now the other thing that's actually a little bit of a concern is how much how much angle is on this dangle it's fairly necked over and um, my concern is that I'm just going to run out of like this is about as articulated as it can go and then I just literally just run out of articulation and I've still got to get a top hat I've got to get a top hat in this side and then some sort of way of retaining it in this side and also this corner here is going to have to be chomped off. But I'm confident, I'm fairly confident this is still going to, you know, um, work all right. There's just a chance that it might not. Okay. Well, no. I reckon a drill could do a sharpening. Just a tip, see what it feels like. Left hand tap, a little groove signifies that this is going to be the left hand one. One of the left hand ones, so now I've got to put it in reverse, like so, and then send this. Quite satisfying, isn't it? <laughs> Technically, shouldn't be sending it with a straight fluted tap in a machine. It's not a machine tap, but meh. You only live once. Well, I got the uh, toe arms quickly um, tacked. Just tack on both ends. I probably should have just done one because I, I still don't actually know if this is going to work. That's fully necked out and I can't actually, I can't tow it in anymore because it's fully necked out. But as you can see, I mean, it works like that lovely. Probably, I uh, hold the camera a bit. So 
So yeah, it's kind of success, but not fully success. So I need to figure out how I'm going to get more articulation out of that that rose joint there. So, I mean, I've got a couple of plans. I either need to make like a cup with a thread on it, but the cup will have to be straight and the thread at an angle. That's an option. Or I make a pocket like this that will go onto the upright. And uh, that, I mean, don't like the idea of that at all, but it's an option. The other option is to come even further out here, which I don't really class as an option because I'm right as far out as I want to go already. To be honest, I can't really think of any other options at this moment in time. One thing I'm going to do though quickly is set up the tripod and see if we can kind of visually see if there's any bump steer. <coughs> Sorry for that grunt, I'm getting old. Old. Old man. Oh, yeah, boy. There is another option. <coughs> there is another option, which is to grind a little bit of clearance in the rose joint itself don't like the idea of that either so far I think my favorite idea is some sort of spherical bearing housing or spherical bearing housing fixed onto the end and then inboard have an in situ adjuster like we have here so this is like, you know, as it is. And then all the adjustment will be done on one end with an in situ adjuster. That is the other option. All for this video. Um, I'm gonna probably try and make this other wishbone over the next few nights. And um, I will try my best to film that. I'm also going to order up some bearings and try and get the hubs built back up. To be honest, they could all be cleaned and painted now. Seeing as I could do with making new uprights, I may just rattle cam them for now and worry about fancy powder coatings after it's all been tested and I know it's going to work. And then uh, make some new, I'd like to make some new ones out of 4130 or or something stronger than mild steel. Cheers!